Hi, in this demonstration I'm going to show you the method of indirect painting. The indirect method of painting is a time-consuming process, so you have to watch the video uh, till the end uh, to see the result and to understand the steps behind it. And then you can um, take up this knowledge and apply it to your art. In this demo I'm using professional art supplies. I'm using two separate brushes for black and white paint. So I keep them both very close to me and I alternate between those. If I need to paint with black or very dark paint, I use one brush. And if I need to go lighter, I switch between the brushes. So I don't have to clean up one brush over and over again, switching between the two major colors. I'm careful placing the lines. The softness or hardness of the edge affects what I'm doing with my subject. It's not going to look realistic if I don't consider the outside value as well. So I'm painting the subject itself, but at the same time I am um, considering the quality of the edge around my lamp. 
because some edges must be sharp and others need to be nice and soft. So this is how I can achieve that. As my first layer I'm painting um, with paint only. I don't use any medium because it actually weakens your paint. And I follow the role of painting uh, fat over lean. Which means that um, you start painting without using the oil at all and then you keep adding um, the oil as you progress layering your paint. Yeah. Actually I uh, paint in two black and white layers. Uh, the first one is just a rough sketch and, and the second one is the refining of the first layer and so when I'm done painting um, in black and white then I layer color and I begin layering color using uh, some oil uh, some medium for oil painting um, the most stable medium is linseed oil I continue filling in um, my painting the same way uh, I've started just uh, in black and white paying attention to my values. I use a stick to hold my hand uh, so it's a lot easier to paint and to make um, nice and even strokes uh, because my hand rests on the stick. Also another thing that is very helpful is to rotate your canvas sideways. So as you can see, it's a lot easier for me to be precise um, painting um, sideways and uh, resting my hand on the stick. This is my second sitting, painting in black and white. The first thing that I do is I use linseed oil and spread it evenly around my panel. When I use clean uh, paper towel, I wipe it off, so I'm ready to paint. Uh, my previous layer must be dry completely before I can start painting uh, my second layer. So in this layer, I continue painting in black and white. The only difference is that I will be as precise as possible. I will continue underpainting it a little bit lighter than it should be, because when I start uh, glazing, uh, the glaze will darken the entire area that is going to be glazed. My paint glides over the panel very smoothly because I, I just have applied um, the linseed oil, so it's a lot easier to paint from now on. I'm using my light fast paints. As usual, I'm resting my hand on my stick to make sure I can get the precise line that I need. As you can see, it's a very slow and controlled process. There is no slapping on canvas. It's um, thoughtful and deliberate. Of course, there are many ways of painting and that doesn't mean that you have to stick to this method. Um, but it's just one of the older methods that exist. I 
Today is the color stage, um, now I'm brushing over the linseed oil and I'm wiping it off. So I have a very thin film on my panel. I will be glazing color over the black and white image that I've got. And then I'll paint the background directly, mixing color and applying heavier. I pre-mixed um, a little bit of cadmium yellow and some red and I have diluted it with the medium and so all I'm doing now is glazing this color on top of my black and white image. As you can see it darkens the surface so that's why um, I previously uh, said that you have to underpaint a little bit lighter than the actual picture that you see because otherwise when you glaze it it becomes too dark and normally uh, I glaze um, a couple of times so I will wait till this layer dries which is not going to be long uh, probably just a day because it's so thin and then I would uh, glaze the second layer uh, to make the color more vibrant so here I'm glazing light yellow mixed with cadmium yellow I'm not worrying about these stripes because I can re-establish them later on. The colors that you glaze must be very transparent on their own. Color mixtures definitely shouldn't have any white in them. If they're semi-transparent, you, you could still use them but um, dilute them is the medium a little bit more or you could spread out the paint like so so for this stage you need just a little bit of paint as you can see um, this color doesn't have the highest intensity it will intensify as soon as I apply the second layer or maybe even the third. Antica Green Earth is a very transparent color on its own and so I mix it with a little bit of black and I glaze it over parts of my image. Again it makes it darker. If I'm losing the control of my brush, um, I go back to my stick and rest my hand on it. I also use the color shaper a lot to get rid of the unnecessary paint. So for this area, I've mixed a little bit of ultramarine with some red and glazed over this space. If it gets too uh, dark, I can wipe it off. Or if I feel like the highlights are not bright enough, I'm gonna wait till it dries completely and then go back and reestablish the highlights. So it's not a lost cause if I don't like it. Then I begin pre-mixing colors for my background. I use the palette knife to do that. 
so I end up having nice and consistent color throughout my painting. So as I go um, mixing the first color that I see in the background, I keep checking it against the photograph that I have. So I can see that the color should be a, lo uh, a little bit cooler. So I'm adding a tiny bit of black into my mix. And as I'm adding it, I'm my color becomes less intense. So the more gray I add, uh, the more uh, less intense the color gets. And so now I'm seeing that I'm getting closer to what I see in the picture. But I still need to gray it down even more. So I add tiny amounts of black into my mix to figure out the exact value I see in the image. So when I'm done pre-mixing my colors, I just uh, begin painting, uh, looking at uh, color variations as well as tone variations and going across the surface, um, filling it in. I do add a little bit of medium at this point. I keep painting, I'm making sure that the color that I have in my um, object does not go uh, to my background because if it does, you lose the sense of the depth. And so I do make sure that I control um, my strokes as much as possible and I don't drag that paint onto this area. I'm also painting right to the edge. I will blend this area with the soft brush um, before I finish my painting for today. But as of now, I'm just applying it and I'm not worrying about the strokes that I see in here. I'm using the light fast paint to make sure that as the time goes, my painting stays nice and doesn't lose the color. In other words, it's not going to fade as quickly as some cheaper paint. I must make sure um, that the edges don't look like cutouts. So I will come back to this area, for example, and I would soften the edge over here with a nice clean um, brush. As I'm applying paint, I don't worry about it for now. I just want to finish my coloring first. Many people ask me why I'm painting in black and white first when I could just skip it and go to color. Uh, the first reason is that it gives me a, a chance to develop my drawing to a, you know, to a perfection. <laughs> it never gets perfect, but I get closer each time I have, you know, I spend enough effort on the drawing part of it. The second reason is that I can achieve glazes uh, by painting in black and white first. There is no other way of doing it uh, to make it look transparent um, by painting directly. So the, to give me the feeling of transparency, I have to underpaint it first and then apply color over it. As a rule, I am using heavier paint when I, uh, when I paint the lighter areas and I'm using much more transparent paint when I um, paint over the darks. It is an illusion, so um, the darks must remain very nice and simple and transparent 
and the lights should be a much heavier. Also, as the paint ages with time, it becomes more transparent, so the lights um, need to be heavier. So I'm finishing up my first color stage. I will wait till it dries completely and then I will be ready to paint my second color layer. As you can see, I'm using a small brush. It's a number one brush. Um, and my strokes are very controlled. So the painting is <clears throat> so the painting is dry to the touch and I'm ready to paint my second color layer. I begin the same way as I um, did in my previous layer. I paint with some linseed oil and then I spread it around my panel. Now I'm using the direct way of painting and just um, intensifying some of the textural elements that I see to give it more depth and definition. As you can see I'm placing um, this color and then I'm blending it slightly into the rest of the image so I don't have rough edges anywhere around this area. The direct method of oil painting is painting in full color from the start and indirect method of painting involve, involves a layering of paint. I pre-mix the color strings and then I pin directly on my panel or canvas. This is the direct painting method. When I mix colors that I see in the picture or in front of me and then um, I pin directly without doing the underpainting. Such a painting is great um, to do outdoors. Just like the Impressionists, you can apply paint quickly to achieve the result that you want. I usually have two or three sessions painting in color.
This concludes my first color pass. In the following layers I build color and detail. I often paint uh, sideways uh, to get the lines as straight as possible. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, to see new demonstrations and um, my artwork, please visit my website uh, www.veronikasart.com. Thank you so much and I'll hope to hear from you soon. Bye-bye.